So there's an easy way to create armor for characters along with the trim and I've provided a brush which I'm going to show you here today. So I'm going to take this character which is something that I was working on as a sketch and it's basically going to be, it, it's not something that you'd normally use, you can see it's quite rough and clay like but just, just to show you that you can use anything as a start base basically. So I'm going to take this and I'm literally just going to draw a mask out on an area here which is going to define the shape of where I would like this um, particular piece of armor to go. So I'm just going to draw out something, control and alt to remove from a mask, control on its own to add to a mask. So we can just draw out a particular shape. And once we're happy with it, and it doesn't have to be too exact, that, that'll do fine. Now all we need to do is do a duplicate of this. So we now have a duplicate. I'm in solo mode, so I'm only seeing the duplicate. I'm going to press Shift F so we can see what we're looking at here, and I'm going to create a polygroup with Control W. So that hard to see here, but that's actually created a polygroup here at this on its own. So I'm holding down Control and Shift and clicking on that to isolate it. And now I can delete the hidden. So I now have a, a very simple part of the original character. If I go out of solo mode, you can see this is a now a new mesh. And we can go down to geometry and hit Z mesh and just uh, bring this right down to something quite low and hit Z mesh. So you'll notice with Z mesh, I'll go back into isolated mode here. That you sometimes you get this kind of a uh, bit of a mess here like and that's generally down to the edges being really dodgy <laughs> and a bit of a mess so the easiest way to do that is just to go to edge loop here and just hit group loops that will clean up the edges around the end around the sides so the next time you go back to your ziri mesher and just hit ziri mesher again you're going to get a much cleaner result you can see there that's that's much nicer so we can go down and say well that's that's okay let's half that again um, and maybe even half that again now I have adjust or adaptive on, so it's not going to give us exactly half, whereas if I turn that off, it's going to give us um, a, a better result that's closer to actually half of what we had. So you can see that there's an error here, and that's because sometimes zero mesh will actually cause um, small extra polygons to be created. You can see here that there's an extra floating one there. So if that happens, all you need to do is go auto groups, which is down in your poly groups, auto groups. And then we can control shift click on this one which will hide everything else that we can then delete so we can go to our geometry modify topology and delete hidden so the next time you use zero mesher now it should work we'll just turn on half again and boom so this is your your mesh and um, you can see like the topology isn't necessarily exactly what you'd like you can hold down alt and just uh, click on that again to get a different version of that i still had half turned on i think this this amount is pretty good so I'm just going to hit um, same and try hit zero mesh one more time and that's giving us a slightly better result so uh, I'll hold on to that one. The one thing about zero mesh is that it will always try and keep um, the shapes that you draw so if you try and make this into a fairly uh, tight corner well then when the zero mesh happens it will give you a tight corner back so for example if we were to decide that we'd like on our piece of armor or leather, be it leather or metal, whatever it is, that we'd like a slightly tighter corner here, for example. We can do that. Zero Mesh will now kind of respect this and give us that corner um, in the way that you'd expect it to. So now that we have a piece of armor here, all we need to do is go to Edge Loop and we want to give it some thickness. So I'm going to turn off Polish because we don't want to polish it. I'm going to turn off Bevel. I'm going to bring the loops down to one and I'm going to hit Panel Loops once just to see what that gives us. So that's kind of okay. That's roughly what we're looking for here. Um, if I want a loop to go around this model now, that this isn't going to be the case right now. So what I need to do is go into that poly group, change to our Z modeler brush with BZM, hover over polygon, which is the, the thickness here. You can see that this all has its own poly group here. And from here we can do poly loop, Q mesh poly loop. So now I can just pull this out. And what that's going to give us is a consistently thick line on the inside of this mesh all the way around it. Now for the trick, in ZBrush if you change BCX, let's load the Curve Tube brush and we make our brush nice and small. If you drag out on the surface you're going to get a, a tube on that surface. But if you drag out and then you hold down Shift as you approach a feature, now a feature is either a border, an open edge or a change in polygroup, you'll see that it will actually create a, it will snap to that surface. I'm going to undo that and this time I'm going to, from this side, press shift and you'll see that it snapped to the edge of that. So this is a nice, quick, easy way. We can change the size 
um, and we've got we've got our trim um, nice and easy so as with all my tutorials you know how I work um, I've decided to give a brush away so I've made a little brush here so you can load that from B load brush browse to your brushes and it's the one called IMM curve armor trim so for the first one here which is plain all you need to do is start drawing out a curve as you would normally but as you get towards the change in polygons in polygroups rather um, just hold down shift and that will create that curve for you now the reason I gave that an inside is because if you make this larger and you click on your curve again you're going to want it to fit the outside of your your shape so we're using dynamic subdivision here I'm going to turn that on and press shift F so we can turn this off and you can see what this looks like so you can move this around you know after the fact if you're not quite happy with its placement um, you can even choose, choose a move tool and move that around now obviously that's not moving the curve that's just moving the shape so um, if your shape is different uh, you and the next time you change the size if you click if you go back to your curve brush tool and you click on that curve again it's going to reset it to wherever the curve last was so but this will give you a, a, very, a good indicator of, of how this is working so from here for example if I undo this I'm just going to dock my brush menu over here so you can see that this is the modifiers here if I turn stretch off and I do the same thing again you'd see that you're going to get this problem here that it's much closer to the outside but sometimes the stretch won't actually work for, um, for the length of the brush like so if I turn a stretch back on and click again you're going to get a better result but it may not match the outside of your surface quite as nicely it depends on how sharp you wanted this to be but you can always edit this there's a few enough points on this that you can edit it quickly yourself so generally I would leave stretch on uh, I'll undo that leave stretch on and that will give me a decent result so if you try it again a second time you generally you'll find it's, it's good so each of these brushes works on that feature so basically um, with a curve brush turned on if you draw out the curve you're going to get that I'll just press MD so we can see this with dynamic subdivision turned on and this is what it would normally look like on the surface but if we wanted to snap to that we hold down shift and we snap and you'll see that that'll get a nice little piece of trim around the outside of our mesh now it may not the coverage you know it may not look great sometimes it won't get as close to the edges as you'd like in which case you can often reduce the the uh, curve resolution I'm going to press shift D again just so we can see draw out the curve and you'll see that we get a closer match there so it's kind of up to you to play with the settings a little bit I have various cur uh, brushes in here and you'll notice with this one I have a crease in here so the reason for the crease is that you may want to add rivets along here so basically the same thing it because it works on features whether they be polygon group changes or uh, creases you can just start drawing out your curve press shift and it will snap to that and you now you've got your rivets along the edges of this so if this isn't quite the distances that you're looking for you can change your stroke distance and you can bring that up or down um, and that would whatever change you make to that and to the size of your brush will be reflected in the size of the rivets uh, so you can get a nice look around here obviously if some of them aren't quite aligned you can just uh, press B M T grab your move topological brush and just move them into place if they're not quite working for you so that's one type of trim and obviously you can stack these up so for example we could have this one here and then we can change our stroke we go back to our brush and change to maybe the scalloped one and do the same thing we can have the scalloped look along the edges of that as well um, or another piece of trim on top of that one so it totally depends on what look you're going for so like I said there are a few different stroke types here and um, if you're looking for a kind of a toothed look uh, it depends on how ornate or uh, you want to go and you can change the size of these and um, by just changing your brush size and like I said you may have to um, move some of them into place or even go back to sorry go back to your brush uh, and you may need to change the coverage that the curve resolution bring it down a little bit or even draw out the stroke again if needs be uh, and you'll get a cleaner result when it when it's larger so it is it can be a little bit fiddly at times but depending on what kind of look you're going for um, hopefully these brushes are uh, useful to you in some manner shape or form like I said this one here it's too big so change your curve resolution down generally the curve resolution kind of works and um, but if it doesn't just bring it down redraw out your stroke and you'll find you'll get a better result 
So yeah, hope this tip helps. And as usual, um, you can download the brush for free from in the Gumroad link. And uh, please do let me know if you have any other suggestions for tutorials that you'd like to see. All right, cheers, bye.